Okay, let's mess with some dynamics effects. And technically they're still operating in the time domain, but they're uh, special in that they operate on uh, dynamics. And usually in music, dynamics refers to loudness, volume uh, changes in a sound. And so that's how we mean dynamics here. Uh, I often call these uh, adult effects. They are not usually the most uh, uh, snappy sounding or uh, exciting sounding things to use. These are things like noise gates and compressors, limiters, expanders. Um, and so they're often used for utilities, but we're going to do some artistically useful things with them. Okay, let's see here. I grabbed some new sounds from my, from my source sound, but I'm gonna go ahead and mute this track again and show you the sounds that I've got. Ooh, I've still got this effect on there, but that sounded really cool. Let's say no plugin, no thank you. And disable all this stuff for now. Okay, come back here and listen to my new sound, which is keys slamming on the floor. And then some walking and talking. That's some interesting stuff in there, but eh, kind of messy. Are we going to be able to do anything with that? Well, let's see. Let me make a new track for us to work in. So I'm going to go up to this track menu here at the top of the arrange window. Make one new audio track. Create. Thank you. And it'll put it down here. I'm going to mute the track we've been working on before. And I'm going to copy my... Oops. I had all those guys selected. I just want this guy. And I'll move this down here. And I'll move this one down here. And so now we'll only hear... For example, the key sl slam sound. And let me zoom in on it. And just for now, I'm going to highlight this and do the set locators feature. So, so we'll only hear that. Okay. Now it's time for some time domain effects and, uh, or well, dynamics effects. So they're under the dynamics menu. And let's look at just a limiter. A limiter limits how loud a sound can get and you might be able to imagine it's uh, utilitarian applications like preventing uh, things from just getting so loud that it hurts ears or damages equipment or uh, gets louder than the uh, dynamic range of recording equipment so it prevents things from clipping and so uh, those are all you know very transparent things usually things we're not supposed to hear but we can do use it for some interesting effects um, basically, a limiter is going to just uh, um, stop things right at zero. Sometimes we may have a threshold setting where we can force it to set things later, but basically the main thing we're going to be working with here is the gain control. And what we're going to be doing is amplifying our signal before it goes into the limiter, and then the limiter will squash it so that the loud parts of the sound always stay the same level, um, and the softer parts of the sound get louder. So let's listen to it uh, in a normal way. So we can even see right here, the loudest part is the attack, and then it very quickly decays after that. But watch what happens as I ramp up the gain. You can see that it's doing more gain reduction here. This is, it's basically an automatic volume control, so we can see it working up here. We basically made a more sustained sound out of this. Let me uh, go through this process again. It's got real punch right now. And now we're just emphasizing the rattle to it. Let's see. We can also start messing with uh, the release time. And let's see what happens when we do this. See, what's happening is it activates when it hears this big attack. It says, whoa, and fades it down. We can see how low it faded it down there. Then the release time is the amount of time it takes to get back up to normal. So we can have it kind of uh, have a little gap in there between having the, the attack happen and then fade in the other sounds. But for something this short, a limiter can be a great way to control sustain on something. Similarly, and I'll let you experiment with this, 
uh, there's a thing called an expander that expands the dynamic range and would make the uh, quieter sounds even quieter, um, useful for noise reduction. Um, but I'll let you experiment with that on your own. So that was a limiter. Let's move on and uh, change to a, still in dynamics, a noise gate. And as you can imagine, a noise gate is also used for noise reduction. And we have a couple more parameters here. It's another kind of automatic volume control, but instead of turning things softer or normal volume, it thing it let things lets things alone or turns them off. And the idea is like for uh, if you're miking an electric guitar that has an amp that buzzes and makes a lot of noise even when you're not playing it. Surely there's some way we can tell the difference between the sounds that we want to record and the sounds that we don't want to record. Playing should be a lot louder than this, uh, the buzz that's happening in the amp amplifier. And so we could set this threshold so as a, our main criterion. So we say if a sound is above negative 51 decibels, then let it through. Open the gate. Let, let us hear the sound. If it falls below this threshold, close the gate. Silence it. And uh, you may hear this on uh, uh, radio call-in shows. Uh, sometimes you'll hear the sound. There'll be a lot of static in the background while the person is talking, but then when they stop, it's uh, nice and clean and silent. That's what how gates are normally used. We're doing other stuff with it. Okay, so let's, first of all, let's see if we can tighten up this, uh, this sound, like our key slam. I'm gonna raise the threshold and you can see at the point where it falls below this, it cuts it off. If that's cutting it off a little too quickly, we can affect the release time here. So it'll be a little smoother cut off, but we're still forcing this to be uh, have a lot shorter of an amplitude envelope. And so that can be a nice way to um, change a whole track if we want to instead of introducing a bunch of individual volume changes with things. I'm going to move this guy out of the way though and check out this walking sound. Okay, we'll bypass our uh, our gate for now. I'm going to reset the set locators. I'll select this and do set locators and now it'll capture my whole sound here and let's listen to it. Okay. There's some, there are definitely some peaks in here, so that's nice, but there's a lot of other stuff in there too. So let's activate our gate and gradually turn up the threshold until it starts working. Oh, we found it. You gotta listen. Okay, that's kind of jittery. Maybe if I make it even higher, I'll only get a couple out. And then maybe if I want to uh, want it to cut out not so quickly, I can make the release time a little bit longer. So this way I'm getting some percussive sounds out of it, um, but I'm just kind of sculpting it out and each one is different. They're kind of triggered by the uh, the footsteps. If I don't want it to fade in so quickly, I have this attack time, and basically the attack is like the attack time of the sound that we're that's resulting from this. So we've got a very short attack time right here. here we've been talking about the release, the tail end of it. This is the beginnings of the sounds that we hear. Right now it's fading in really quickly. Let's soften this attack. So now it's not as drastic. So we've got a lot softer. We can even use this hold and force it to stay open for a certain amount of time. You might, might, might even think about this as a duration for your notes or a staccato legato kind of control. While the attack and release um, control the more uh, the amplitude envelope part of the sound. Okay, so let me get something a little bit more useful here. Oops, I want to get rid of the hold.
That's nice. What I like about it is that it's percussive and there, there's a lot of... The, the so sounds that are triggering the attacks are pretty much the same. They're footsteps probably maybe even from the same person. But um, because of the other sounds around it, each one is a little bit different. We've captured some nice natural grit that's hard to reproduce. Okay, then if maybe say we didn't really want to be something to be that uh, that pointy, po pointillistic, but we didn't really want to add any of the more of the words in, we have to keep it this way. Well, you know, we could use something like a reverb to uh, smear out the sounds a little bit more and take what we're getting and sustain those a little bit. <laughs> okay, get the idea? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, let me show you one other thing with uh, with gates that you can do. And let me zoom out here. Okay, so we've got this one pattern. I'm going to line it up with this. And actually, let me do this. I'm going to switch these guys around. And so now I'm running the gate on this, but I still like this pattern. I want to impose this pattern on something. I can use what's called a side chain. And this is in another, um, uh, another image that comes from uh, analog studios and running cables and patching things in and things like that. Um, a side chain means that we've got a separate signal path that's coming in the side or is parallel to the thing that we're actually listening to and processing. So I can actually pick, see this track audio 2, I'll pick audio 2 as a side chain and that means that it's going to be process, processing this sound. See we've got track audio 3 that's the one with the noise gate on it, and we'll leave the reverb on it. That'll be cool. Well, actually, not for this. Okay, fine, we'll leave it. You convinced me. But this guy is going to be listening to track number two to make its decisions on when to cut, out, cut on and off. So let's see. Right now, oh, that got a little bit bigger. But now it's silent because this is silent. Oops. And I'm going to want to reset my set locators here. Thank you. And I'll get to start playing here. So, oh, come on. Fine. I'll set my own locators just by dragging. And track two is silent here, so it's not doing anything. Okay, so we got that same rhythm that's been imposed on this. And let's see what happens if we I say no side chain. Let's just listen to this and bypass this whole effect. Actually, remember this is our reversed rail bang. So now with this side chain, it's listening to this one to make its decisions, but it's doing its work on this one and sounds pretty cool, I think. So that way, we're not even, we don't even care about the voice sounds we're getting in there anymore. We can't hear them at all. We're just using it to automate the volume control for this. So that means that we could also take this one and put it here. And let's see, I'll Command C and Command V to paste this sound. And I'll, so I'm basically stamping this rhythmic motive, this complex rhythmic motive. And now we'll hear it on both of these things. And uh, I'll set a new, well, I'll just turn this off for now. Silent, then. And then the octave up version. Okay, so see how far your rhythmic ideas can go with this. Um, and see how unboring we've made these effects. I think that's pretty cool. And of course, if we did want it to be staccato, we could just take off the uh, the reverb, remember, and get this version. And really, we could go back in the noise gate and just say, go ahead and have a longer release. 
that'll be fine. It's still a different effect from adding reverb afterwards. We're not, we, we don't hear the voices anymore in this sound. We're not really listening to it, only this is listening to it. Uh, but uh, with this, we can let gates go an awful long way. Also, I want you to try, uh, try finding sounds that are um, static textures, things that change a little bit, kind of like this section right in here. They change a little bit, but not too much. And you'll have to listen to it very carefully and find the threshold where the gate starts working. But then with that, like with sounds like water rushing or air conditioners blowing or things like that, you can carve very natural rhythms out of these things that could become very fascinating rhythmic motives. And if you don't like the timbre that you got, you could use it uh, to feed a side chain on some other sound and uh, get even more uh, awesome and uh, organically related results. Okay, that's all.